So, powerful nonsenses! Hello. Let's get ready to rumble! Rumble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hello! Welcome back, slash welcome for the first time. In fact, if you are for the first time, the where first have time. you been? We, where Do have you been? Do you know how much we put out for so well, many episode years? episode 141. Yes. That's once a week. That's that's two, two that's and a half time. years. That's a lot of time. We'll never no, get back. No, that's nearly three years. That's, that's a lot of time I've had to spend with you. And how lucky I am. Feeling, uh, There you go. Feelings mutual. <laughs> I was going to say that, by the way. <laughs> I just did the most weird <laughs> wink at you ever. It was like a... Seizure. I think you had a seizure at the thought of liking you. <laughs> <laughs> Mother. Anyway. <laughs> so, I am Jimmy Yildiz. And I am Wayne Ingram. Oh, do you know, I hate doing that. Can you start and just do yours again? Because when I put the name tags on, I have to switch them. Who are you? What? Just say your name. I'm Wayne Ingram. I'm Jimmy Yildiz. I'm going to move the tags over. Don't worry, editing thing that I have to do. Have you already got it pre pre programmed yes. in so it fades it? Oh, I see. Yeah, see if I did it, I had to put my name first and move it. Yeah. Saving yourself some work. Got to do that. Yeah, efficiency. I mm. like it. Anyway, <laughs> um, what, what are we talking about today? Uh, complaining. Oh, excuses. That's right. Complaining. Complaining and why complaining is killing you. Do you know why that's perfect as well? Because you're complaining. No, because you haven't stopped complaining about how cold it is. It's freezing. It is a little cold, and we are actually keeping the heater off while we're recording. Sacrifices made mm-hmm. for you. <laughs> we'll be for all right. For you. We'll be all right. We'll hug it out after. <laughs> Touching me. <laughs> Keep your filthy paws off me. Bro. Anyway, so, so um, this one could get a little bit salty. Yes. I've already pre worn Jem. I've come with a vinegar, he's come with a salt. <laughs> <laughs> Damn so the episode is called Why Complaining is Killing You. And it's yeah. a bit extreme. It's probably not killing you, but it's probably holding you back in some way. So basically, everything that we're about to say is complete bollocks. And elaborated. It's just clickbait. Clickbait. Pure clickbait. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the data, guys. <laughs> um, no. Uh, but no, it's, it's, a, it's a serious thing. And actually, funnily enough, my... Do you remember my thing for this year? My kind of mantra for this year? Well, stop being a dick. Or was that the other one? No. My mantra for 2016 mm. was no excuses. Yes. Do you remember? I don't. And what, why is that then, Jen? Because I don't listen. Excuses! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and, and I think it's... Do you know what? It's, it's such a empowering position to be in because you stop kind of... Well, you stop blaming things for, for your lack of... Nuts. Everything. Everything. Everything that you want and you hope to achieve. It's probably not getting done because of some kind of excuse. Mm -hmm. And obviously there are serious excuses, which are not excuses, they're probably things that hold you back actually because you've got to take care of that shit. But if you've got no real shit going on, Uh then I think your excuses are just straight up. And define, define just, just to give us an example, some real shit. Family member in hospital. Okay. And another one? One more. You lost your legs. Okay. So, if a family member is not in <laughs> hospital, they haven't lost your legs, you've got no excuse. Severe illness. Se- se- severe illness. Um, that would do for now. Yeah. Those criteria. Those criteria are the only valid criteria. No. But <laughs> things along those lines. The excuse police will be on you <laughs> if you're not. Could you imagine if we had excuse police? They just, every That'd time you amazing. came, you're just about to have an excuse like, sorry, I couldn't make it on your date. <laughs> Just tackled out of the street. <laughs> like, do you know what? Someone should probably like hire that person to follow them around every time you, know you have what? an excuse. That would be such a good social experiment, wouldn't they it? They just rugby tackle you out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> just some like brute rugby guy. <laughs> <laughs> every time you're just about to reach for that donut, like oh, I can't lose weight. You go for the donut. Bam, take it. Out. <laughs> Gore. <laughs> Then I generally think you'd get some stuff oh. done. You'd be freaking out. Can we can we please make a, a sketch? Yeah. And film a sketch. <laughs> okay, get okay. someone to do that. Oh. I, that would be so I funny. I think that'd be so good. The excuse for But this. I reckon if you had that person going around with you, but people should put that in their head, like think in your mind, like, is this an excuse? And at that moment, would that rugby guy take me out because I'm having that excuse? Uh-huh. Because yeah. I think it would it, multiple times a day. Yeah. Easy for most people. 
Yeah, it's like, oh, when you got up this morning, it's like, yeah, I'm going to do 20 push ups. You got up, he was like, you know what? It's Tell too me. cold. Too cold. I'm in the same bed. Robbie Tackle. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if you were lying in bed, how are you going to be Robbie Tackled if you're lying in bed? People's elbow. Just drop, <laughs> drop the elbow drop. Elbow drop to the chest. <laughs> But but the point is, is uh, most of the stuff that you want to get done and that you want to achieve is only being held back by your own uh, kind of positive reinforcement for your own lacking I think, I, behavior. <laughs> I think people can justify the shit out of anything. Like mm-hmm. if you don't do something, you can justify why you didn't do it. Yeah. And then people get that sort of like extreme express delivery to your brain that says yeah, you couldn't do it because you did feel a little cold this morning mm-hmm. and it is a bit colder, so you probably shouldn't go for a run today. Or Yeah, that's we have got a, We've got a highway to excuse, most of us. Highway to excuse. Yeah, quit your highway to excuses. Like I that. feel like that's the next, like, ACDC. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I want a highway to excuses. Kind of. Might Doesn't need to work, work on the, uh, the wording a little bit, yeah. but Nothing. yeah. <laughs> anyway. So, we, we, is this it, the caffeine kicking I in? Think, I, it's, I think I'm coming out of the We're caffeine. All over the I place. Think. Anyway, so, yeah, I, I mean, you had quite a few points on the episode that I was like, he's getting vicious. <laughs> he's yeah. getting salty. Like, what, okay, as an, give, give us a few examples of some excuses that have been driving you up the wall, because I saw a few of them on your thing. Oh yeah, yes. my main one because I'm always about like I'm pretty passionate about health and fitness and looking oh, after yourself. I know, as I, know, I believe, I know this one's coming. That is the root of all your energy and pushing. And I think the biggest excuse people make is like why, why they will not work out, why they will not eat good food. I mean, I'm not pointing this at anybody because <laughs> this is about just the people out there. So I'm not gonna name any names or make anybody feel like I'm talking towards them. <laughs> So, <laughs> no, to be fair though, I will completely come clean and I know that a lot of it is excuses and a lot of it is lack of discipline. In fact, I had a conversation with somebody the other day about me being, uh, I was like, I really should join the gym. And then the next thing that came out of my mouth was, but to be honest, the two gyms that are closest to me are so far away, there's no point. And they're like, well, why? I was like, well, one of them, I've got to walk to the bus stop and then get the bus. But then that one's really expensive. It's like 100 quid a month. Not even kidding. Genuine. Which I think, to be fair, that's not an excuse. That's extortion. (laughs) Um, They know robbery. And then the other one is like a 40-minute walk away. There's no public transport route. There's a 45-minute walk. I may as well just jog to the gym, turn around, and jog back. Well, there you go. You just answered your... Right. Right. So then they were like, well, why don't you do that? I was like, yeah, but I don't like running outside. And they were like, okay... Well, then go to the gym then. I was like, yeah, but what I really need, to be honest, is a personal trainer because I don't have the self-discipline. Yeah, but then... And, and then they were like, okay, well, go get... Pay for a personal trainer, do like four or five sessions. Then they, then you've got a routine, you know what you're doing? And I was like... I love this. This is like yeah. um, and li- then, live excuse storytelling. Uh, it was. And then, and then in the end, I just came clean and I was like, to be honest, I just don't have the self-discipline. That's it. That was it. I came, completely came clean. I was like, that's all excuses. It's just all honest. motivation, isn't yeah. it? It's just yeah. the stories. Yeah. It's the uh, Tony Robbins. It's a should. I should work out, mm-hmm. but you don't have to. It's not a must yet. So mm-hmm. that's the problem people have. And I know we spoke a lot about like habits and mm-hmm. that's the tough bit. I mean, anything you want to do, it has to be convincing enough. We're so like animalistic in that mm-hmm. way that we really have to see a vision for it. It's like someone said, you know what, Wayne, you've got a photo shoot next week for Abercrombie and Fitch and you're going to be in trunks. You, <laughs> you uh, you'd be rocking out the 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 tan corset as fast as possible. The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. It's, it's true. On like, that bed, I won't eat for a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so something switches on when there's the motivation there, and mm-hmm. I think. That's How did prob- you know that I had a photo shoot for Amber Combe and Fitchens? Well, you know, you've been uh, in trunks. <laughs> photos available at palvinons dot com slash put it away. <laughs> <laughs> You know you want to see that. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Let's hope not. Um, but yeah, it is that. I think people always make excuses. I think as well, like one thing I really wanted to sort of say, I think a lot of the time, because we're not just talking about health, we're talking about maybe changing their career or earning more money or mm-hmm. finding a partner, all these mm-hmm. things. And I think a lot of the time, I think like I had like a quote that actually stuck in my head from our notes, but it was this idea that I think 
excuses thrive when you're in survival mode. Yes. Yeah. And so it's easy. And we've said this, we were joking earlier about like veganism and then there's a lot of like middle class white vegans. And it's this idea that in your, if you're in that stage where you've got quite a lot of money, you can eat out, you can buy expensive food, not that vegan food or any kind of food is super expensive to eat healthy. And I think people should prioritize what they eat. Number one, over the other things they spend their money on, little rent. But it's that idea that a lot of people who are out there wanting to make change in their lives, a lot of the time they are living like month to month. They've got a lot mm-hmm. of bills. They've got a lot of pressures. They've already feel like they're burning the candle at both ends. And then mm-hmm. suddenly now they've got an excuse. You know what? I can't pay for the gym because I'm just about paying for my rent. Or mm-hmm. I can't eat good food because it takes too long to cook and I get home from work late. And I know these are kind of like, sometimes you look at them and say, well, actually, that's quite a valid excuse. But then you kind of have to kind of drill into some of these people and say, well, you can't pay £100 for a gym, but you spend £50 on a weekend mm-hmm. twice a month mm-hmm. to go out drinking. Or you can't cook yourself a meal, but actually you don't mind waiting 45 uh-huh. minutes for your pizza to arrive. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's drilling down on those things and then you can yeah. kind of flip it on its head and say, well, actually, there's probably somebody else in that situation who probably earns a bit less than you, but they're in great shape and mm-hmm. they eat really well. And it's kind of like... There's always someone who's not having that excuse. And I, I think that's when it comes down to the motivation behind it. Yeah. Well, I think as an, as an example, like uh, I was having a conversation with someone uh, about a month or two ago and uh, they were like, they're, they're doing really well for themselves in their day job. They're like, yeah, but do you know what? I really think I could just do it on my own and set up my own business and do it that way. I said, well, why don't you then? They're like, well, I haven't got time. I was like, you've got time. They're like, no, well, I don't really have time. I'm like, how many days a week do you work? They're like, six. I'm like, okay. I'm like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Off their case. And then, and then I was like, but, you know, you, you've got time. She's like, no, I haven't got time. I'm like, yeah, but you have got time. Make time. She's like, yeah, but how do I make time? She's like, I get up at five o'clock every morning and then I don't go to bed till like nine o'clock at night and then I'm up again at five o'clock and like my whole day's working. I'm kind of like, well, okay. These are all, to be fair, in her defence, quite valid points. But at the same time, I was kind of like, but why are you in that situation? Yeah. You've put yourself in that situation. You have the power. you got the power <laughs> um, to pull yourself out of that situation yeah. if you really, really want to do it. Yeah. And the whole, and I think this is, comes from Seth Godin. They, <laughs> why not? <laughs> Seth Godin, it's yours. Um, <laughs> is, uh, I haven't got time, just means it's not a priority. Yeah. And I think like anything, it's like as soon as some, it's again, it goes back to that motivation. If it's a priority and it has to be done. Like if someone says, well, you're like to that person, if they said, well, you work six days a week, but your family, someone's in hospital and you want to spend as much time with them. Suddenly, even though you had no time, you'd mm. still find the time to go see That's them in true. hospital yeah. because you'd have to, because they're going to die or something. Because you turn around to work and you'd go, no, I've got other shit to deal with. Yeah. And so that suddenly becomes a massive priority in your life. But because it's not to that level, not to that extreme, and maybe that excuse doesn't feel valid enough to say, do you know what, to your boss, mm. can't do six days a week. Like, that's un- mm. I haven't got any time for my life. Like, actually, I want to go down to four, but I still want to be paid this much because you know I'm a hard worker and I manage people. Like, it's that. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing that people need to kind of, like, switch. And I think some people like excuses. Some people like complaining. Mm. It's very nice. That's true. It's, it's, it's fun to complain because true. then you then it lets you off the hook straight away. Mm. So I think that's a massive thing that I think... Uh, people need to kind of question themselves. Like, do you like the fact that you can complain and have an excuse that you can't work out because that means you get to lay in bed and eat pizza? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I do, I do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to let you ponder on that for a minute. I'm going to take a break, I think, on yeah. that note. Grab a slice of pizza. Grab a slice of pizza. <laughs> pizza. 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 Enjoy that. And we'll be back in a minute and uh, berate you for it. <laughs> So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, So why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're alumni. We went there. So everything that we kind of delivered to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, But also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) 
it's not just about setting up a business, it's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. How is the pizza? Tasty. Mm-hmm. I'm hungry, actually. Oh, me too. I really want pizza. <laughs> I'm ready to eat. I had a vegan pizza the other day. It was actually pretty decent. Pizza's vegan anyway, right? What the cheese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the slavings of the, 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 the slavings of cheese I'm like, that drip down I'm your like, beard. I'm like, there's no meat on pizza. What's the problem? <laughs> <laughs> Just bread and tomatoes. <laughs> so, what did you have instead of cheese on the pizza? I think you had like a vegan cheese. So, I don't even know if it had cheese on it. It was just tasty. Okay. I don't know. It was nice. I love cheese too much. I'm sorry. See, I, I could just eat a cheese and tomato pizza. Mm. I'd be happy with that. Just, you just take for that. the rest of my life. Have you tried it? I mean, I'm going to take you for a vegan pizza, see what happens. I'm sure it's lovely. Mm. It is. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you've come here not to listen to our whatever that's called. If it was a vegan pizza, Jem's not judging you. But I am anyway, because okay. you had the pizza, and we told you we told you to. Complaining. Coercion. Um, Complaining. Yeah, it's our fault, right, that you ate that pizza? Yeah, it's our fault. We told you to. <laughs> mm-hmm. We gave you the... Uh, we gave you... The permission. The permission, that's right. So it's our fault, is it? Is it? Is it? Anyway. Back to the episode. So, complaining. Complaining is a bad thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> No, so I, I'm gonna still. I stole one from Gary V. Go on and I take it. Stole one it. from Gary V, uh, which is that complaining is a defensive position. Yes, it is. And I feel like my example of my lack of exercise is a perfect example of just being on the defensive. It's like, well, why don't you then? Because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but why can't you? Because reasons. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, well, it's it's winter now, so if I go for a jog outside, it's going to really hurt my chest. Just building up the layers, just yeah. building up the layers over winter, like it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it's, it's just not good, it's not good. We're um, bringing, in, bringing in that cold there, it hurts the lungs, right? Yeah, exactly, right? It right. totally does, yeah. it totally does. And then, you know, yeah. that w- rules that out. They're like, yeah, but didn't you say you've got weights in your room? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, why don't you do weights in your room? Because they're holding my door open. <laughs> 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 True story. <laughs> <laughs> it is that though. It is kind of like just outsourcing the fact that you can't uh-huh. control yourself. It's just not taking responsibility and being mm. like, do you know what? I'm being shit. I'm being lazy. I don't want to. Do you know what? Sometimes it is just the correct answer is because I don't want to. At least that's honest. Exactly. Like nobody can call you out for bullshit. On that. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want to. I'm a lazy bastard. Bullshit, you don't want to. No, I don't I don't want to. Just not feeling it. But that's where, obviously, there are so many habits that are productive and good for you that you mm-hmm. have to find a way to make them part of what you do. So, Wayne, people might be thinking, Jem, you superior. Beep. <laughs> and we, Wayne... And I'd be like, you're totally right. <laughs> no, I agree. Um, <laughs> but if yeah. you were talking to someone out there who maybe is the fitness thing or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. you were trying to then coach them on becoming someone that then, what would you start to want to tell yourself? So but that hang you on, would? hang on. What, what, hang on. Because if you say to me fitness, that completely changes everything. I know, because you'll be... <laughs> because I'll be like, I'm worse. doing all right. You're the, the anti-personal trainer. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, it's eat fine. that cake. You're I think it's healthy to eat that cake. It's good for your mind. <laughs> but you've already said that, obviously, no, in the next couple of months, health is something that you want to yes. sort of attack, which you, obviously, like, you're loaded with your... Yes complaints on that so yes. how would how are you going to go about sort of trying to i would say right i would say i think a lot of the reasons why these excuses come about particularly with something like fitness because i think that's the easy one to go excuse it um is because i think sometimes <laughs> we just go we just look too big at things right yeah. we kind of go oh i'm gonna have to build so many new habits just to get to that point and I think that's, for me, I said, it's the fact I said earlier, I was like, I know I can get there. I've got there before. It's just the path to getting there. Like, when you said, you could get there in six weeks. I'm like, yeah, but that's six whole weeks. Yeah. I can't manage a week. <laughs> and I think that's the problem. I think rather than just going, oh, I'm going to do an intense workout for a whole month. If you just go, I'm going to do 
even if it's just like, I'm going to do 50 push-ups every day mm. and build on it and build on it and build on it. And it's taking the little steps rather than like this massive, with something like fitness, obviously. If it's like, why didn't you get your homework done? Well, then that's slightly different because <laughs> you, you can't it, really do that. Well, but actually, you no, know, I suppose you can. And if you're doing homework, it is. In fact, sometimes, it. sometimes I used to. <laughs> I used to go, do you know what? I'm going to do half hour and then I'm going to take a break. And then I'm going to do half hour and take a break. Again, it sort of goes back to that habit building, isn't it? It's like yeah. they say all the time, small steps. Okay, you haven't got time to write your book. Well, mm-hmm. write 100 words a day and by the end of a month, you've got whatever. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, I think more importantly, just be willing to call yourself out on your own bullshit. Mm. Because do you know what I think is actually I just a thought came to mind I was listening to I think it was an audio book the other day I think the problem is we look at like we look it's harder to kind of move ourselves when it's so far to go but mm-hmm. then to actually question yourself and say what if I never do that and like look at it the other way around what would I miss out on if I never mm-hmm. took action so what if I just never let my health go or mm-hmm. never got my health in order or what if I never began writing a book and I think yeah. sometimes the pain of loss of knowing that if I never adopt a certain habit or mm-hmm. let go of these excuses i might never write that book that i really want to write i might never yeah. be in good shape i might go down the same uh health route as my uncle who died of this or mm-hmm. it's kind of sometimes i think you have to what's it like back motivate yourself by looking at what you yeah. may never have because of the the, uh, the choice today yeah in some ways yeah yeah it's i, I had an exchange with somebody i was like you, i said to them i was like your future self will thank you for it they're like, future self doesn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't remember what it was. There's like a science study as well that I read about where they actually like aged people. It uh-huh. was like, it was like whether they actually, I think it was something to do. Like it was a fitness thing. I think that maybe they had to, they put like bowls of fruit out of veg right. and stuff like that. And then what they did is they showed you a... m and is a fruit, a, a, right? <laughs> it's kind of like one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Cheers, mate. So basically, they um, showed people older versions of themselves so uh-huh. that they could actually visualize themselves as an old person. And then when they go back to the room, they are better at making decisions of stuff that are more um, productive for the future self. Uh-huh. The same thing about the savings as well. You save right. more when you can visualize your, your mm-hmm. future self. Mm-hmm. So it's, again, it's, it's all that psycho. It's so much psychology. This is the thing, like they say, if you look at any successful person, their psychology is on point. Yeah. They know when their brain has got these biases that is literally yeah. kicking them in the butt. And I think that's the problem. It's so easy. Once the brain's in control, it's like, yeah, I've got this. And then That's it, the dangerous bit, isn't it? It takes control. It's If your brain is the one that causes the shots, you're kind of fucked. <laughs> yeah. Which is weird because it is your brain, but then sometimes you need the brain to tell your brain that mm. this is the right thing to do. I was having a conversation with... Oh, it was it was about Chris Pratt, the actor, hmm. who was in uh, Jurassic World and Guardians of the Galaxy, right? And whilst we're talking about fitness, because I don't know if you've seen old Chris Pratt, but old Chris Pratt was ah, well, he wasn't. You know what? He wasn't obese. He was just chubs, chubster. Right? And now he's fucking super ripped. Well, he's probably not now because he's stopped filming. But and that's a bit that a lot of people don't see as well. The celebrities go. <laughs> Once no, they're not filming, they're like, no, okay. They I'm do in. that. I remember like Tom Hardy when he was uh-huh. like ripped and then they show him on a boat with like some gut just hanging uh-huh. out. And Vin Diesel recently Vin Diesel. as well. Um, but yeah, but the point is, is they can, they turn it around. And for Chris Pratt, he, he was saying like, when I got ripped, like it, it gave him a sense of control. Mm-hmm. And, and it's funny that that's the flip side that, that for a lot of people, the excuse, which is the, I'm not in control is why they don't get fit and or whatever the whatever the case may be. But the moment they do it, they go, shit, I'm in control. And I think the same is, I've heard people say the same thing about smoking and things like that. People that have started to give up smoking, they get, get to the point where they're like, I've got to a week and I haven't had a cigarette. That is one massive victory. Screw you, cigarette craving, I'm winning. Mm-hmm. And then two weeks happens and they have that same feeling. And I think it's this idea that, we're so willing to, again, not take responsibility and just kind of go, do you know what, it's not in my control, rather than actually just take the ball by the horns and go, I'm making this decision. And we talked about, um, we did the episode about comebacks recently, and I was mm-hmm. saying about how I kind of felt like I was in a state of comeback. And the last few weeks I've kind of gone, mm, <laughs> and I've kind of relaxed on it a little bit because in a way I've kind of got to that point where, as you were just saying, where my brain's gone, I've got this now. And then because I've gone, I've got this now, I stopped putting the energy into it. And so I've taken, I've taken control back. away from myself and given it 
to external rather than going, no, this is this mm. is me that's, steer, that's steering this ship. <laughs> and, and there was a quote that I put in the notes as well, and it was this idea that actually you can you only complain about the things you can change. Yeah, so go on, because I saw to... this, and, and, and I need you to elaborate on and this. And then because... I think I heard this somewhere else, and someone was saying, like, you don't see people complain about gravity again, I'm bloody sticking me to the ground, I bloody can't. I do. Do you complain about gravity? You yeah. want to just be I'm a short ass, so I can only reach so high. <laughs> so I'm just like, if it weren't for gravity, I could you, jump higher. You'd, I'd, you'd like they say, no, I'm going to kick you in the balls, and you'll, <laughs> <laughs> you'll float away. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah so but they were saying like the things you usually complain about you often if you really look into them you probably you have a uh, an opportunity to make a change there mm-hmm. so if you question anything that you find yourself um, complaining about a lot straight away you know what the answer is to it ultimately so any complaint try any complaint see i'm really trying to challenge i really want to Go challenge on, on this if, uh, tell me a complaint that you have on a regular basis that you can't change that I personally have on a regular basis. Or whoever, or what you think a common complaint is, and we'll see if there's an opportunity to change it. You see, the things that I want to go You're into... Just, he's just going to go into something like totally... Well, they're a little bit like too political that... and a little bit controversial, so okay. I don't really want to go into them okay. for the podcast. Okay. Because I don't believe... Yeah. Uh, so I kind of... The, the ones that I'm like, no. I The one that really comes to my mind all the time is when people say, like, I don't get paid enough. Oh, oh yeah. Well, that's... Which people are like... Yeah, I don't get paid enough, but that is a choice of you can change that. Uh-huh. But people usually think that's out of your control. A lot of people mm-hmm. say, well... Oh, yeah, like mo- the most... I will admit, you're right in most respects. The most common complaints are usually changeable, but there are also... Le- let me put it this way. There are certain minorities... <laughs> there are certain minorities... <laughs> the bush with this that, that believe rightly or wrongly that because they belong to those minorities that they are at a disadvantage. Now, yes. I would say that there is probably more that can be done by themselves to not just accept that as a disadvantage, mm. right, and to actually try and take action on it. However, I would still also say that those disadvantages do still exist. They're present, but there is always... So they can't change the fact that they're disadvantaged. Or they discriminated. Only, yeah. They but... can only try and lever- maximise the degree to which they are not disadvantaged yeah. but they're still disadvantaged so it's still something that they can't change yeah i get that i mean see but then you can either use that was a that. long way around of explaining I it, but <laughs> i was trying to be as <laughs> pc yeah, yeah. No, not pc but like no, non-political as okay. i possibly could be yeah and i agree obviously those those disadvantages may be around but then i always think that you can either then just bend over and accept that or you can look at the anomaly and then say actually well this person hasn't let mm. that be a thing that holds them back and like you say use it as an advantage or use there's always things that are just going on, but it's how you kind of move them into your into your favour. I think the lady who owns the studio is popping in, so okay. shall we quickly uh, wrap <laughs> things up? Yes, so uh, <laughs> thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, and uh, we need to go stop this episode. Yeah, and you make it sound like we're not supposed to be here. We're totally I know, it's like we here. just like broke in, but... <laughs> But uh, thanks very much. Kind of sure. And this is not an excuse and this is not a complaint for why we're leaving. <laughs> no, we were, we're, we're going to wrap it up anyway. But uh, yeah. Just a quick... Uh, oh, I feel like we've, I feel like we've shortchanged everyone. Um, Shall we just summarise? I think we might yeah. have some time. Point is, point is, most of the time, if you're giving an excuse or you're complaining about something, it's probably just deflecting away from the fact that you're not executing. Boom. We'll end it there. Yeah. So thanks very much, guys. Catch you next time. See you later.